Hey everybody, continuing on with our pasta unit, today we are going to look at making a homemade lasagna. So I have already gone through and I have mise en place everything. That's going to be one of the things that is super important when you make lasagna because you are going to layer it. So you want to have all of your ingredients completely together um, and portioned out. So uh, look for different recipes. You're going to find a little bit of you know different variations of your amounts as well as some of the different types of cheese. So we are gonna be using a combination of two cups of ricotta cheese. You can see the ricotta is a really, really soft textured cheese. It's a heavy whipped ricotta cheese. So it's almost gonna be like a spread. We have two cups of mozzarella cheese, same shredded mozzarella that you would put on a pizza, and about a half a cup of grated Parmesan cheese. I have a little bit of fresh parsley that's going to go over the very top, but this is just kind of an added garnish. We have five and a half cups of, or about five cups, excuse me, of meat sauce. If you watched one of our tomato sauce videos that we made earlier, I took that tomato sauce and combined it, added a lot of spices, a little bit of tomato paste, and used that tomato sauce as the base to make this meat sauce, which is great. So we've got five cups of the meat sauce. And then homemade pasta sheets. You don't have to use fresh pasta when you make lasagna. There's a couple different variations. Some recipes will call for boxed dry pasta like you would buy at the store. And some recipes say cook the pasta noodles, the lasagna sheets, and then get ready to put those into your layers. Some recipes say don't bother doing that because they can be cooked in the oven. Some recipes say cook them halfway, al dente, and then layer them and they finish off in the oven. It's really a variation. It's one of those things that it becomes preference as you start to you know, do recipes and play with the recipes and the time and the temperature all adjust based on what type of pasta noodle you're using. Now, I will be honest, I was going to use dried pasta noodle and when I went to the pantry a little while ago, I realized that I did not have any lasagna noodles, which I thought I did. So the same way that we made the pasta sheets in the dough video that you can find on Schoology, I whipped up a batch of pasta dough and then went ahead and rolled that out on the pasta roller. So when you're using fresh pasta, these pasta sheets, you'll tell, you'll be able to tell when we start to assemble, they are not going to be all exactly the same and it's going to be kind of like a puzzle piece. And that's okay because once they cook in the oven, especially once the cheese starts to bind them and mush them and gush them, it'll be perfect. So they don't have to be perfect. All right, so what we're gonna do is we are gonna use a nine by 13 glass pan here, baking dish. In the restaurant, if we were making the same recipe for anything in the Titan Terrace, we use these half hotel pans that are aluminum. You can see that they aren't quite as long as a traditional baking dish that you would have at your house, but they are a little bit taller. So we're gonna use the same measurements because it is about the same um, finished product. But we're gonna get this one out of the way and I'm gonna use the clear, that way you can see it as we layer. All right, so I've got the cutting board in case we need to cut any of the pasta sheets so I'm not doing it directly onto our countertop. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you are going to layer about a cup and a half of sauce along the bottom layer. So I have a half cup measuring cup, so I'm gonna use three of those, and I'm just gonna put them in three different places. It just makes it easier to spread. So half cup, one cup total, and then now I have a cup and a half. I'm gonna use the back of a ladle here to go ahead and spread that out. Now this bottom layer, you do wanna get into your corners. Your other layers aren't as important to coat all the way to the sides of the edges. You wanna make sure that you have a smooth layer, but it doesn't have to be you know, as precise. But that bottom layer, you want to really you know, balance out the entire pan whatever pan you're using. All right, next we are gonna do a layer of the pasta sheets. So like I said, this is gonna be a little bit of a jigsaw puzzle here, and I am going to use a couple of these, and I might not go in the same direction each time, just based on what size sheets that I have. 
So this particular time, oops, I've got to really make sure that I pay attention to keeping the noodles spread out for all the different sides. I do have a couple smaller, skinnier noodles that are over this way. So I'm gonna use that one right over here. Basically take the outer layer of the uh, pan there. And then I'm gonna use this one and kind of size it in really quick. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, that pan's not too hot, so it can go right on the countertop. And I'm going to, like I said, just kind of puzzle piece this together. And there I have a pretty much layered fresh pasta sheets. All right, another thing that you can do also, um, you can buy full pasta sheets that are actually, they're actually made to be about the size of a sheet pan, about a half sheet pan, which is nice because then you just layer them and you're good to go. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit more sauce. All right, um, we're gonna do another cup and a half. Now remember we had five cups to start. This is when it gets to be pretty important that you wanna spread out the sauce as you're dropping it down. If you only drop it in one place and you go to spread it with either a spatula or the back of a spoon, it makes it hard because sometimes you can pull the pasta noodles and then the beautiful time that you spent making sure that they were layered really well kind of goes out the window. All right, so I'm gonna use this. Again, using the back of my spoon and my ladle, that smooth side. And I'm gonna go ahead and be able to crease those all the way up to the corners. All right, so now we're gonna add some of the really, really goodness. We are gonna start adding some of the sauce, or excuse me, some of the cheese. That's the really goodness. Now we're gonna start with first uh, one cup of mozzarella. So I said in here that we have two cups, so I'm just gonna eyeball this and not use a measuring cup. I wanna use about half of this. So I'm going to just start to sprinkle it right across. And the beauty of a lasagna is if one layer has a little bit more cheese, or if you're doing like a vegetarian lasagna, and one layer is a little bit more full than the next, it doesn't matter. It's perfectly fine if that happens. All right, so with the cheese, try not to take the cheese all the way to the side. You want to leave a little bit of space just because as the cheese starts to melt, you don't want it to get stuck to your baking pan, okay? So now we've got our mozzarella. We're going to do another layer of noodles. All right. Uh, yeah, we're going to go this way. We're still going to go this way. And I'm going to pull this. And like I said before, if some of your pasta sheets are not perfect, then not a big deal. I'm gonna size this one and cut this in half. We're gonna use that there. Same thing here. And I think I've got a skinny piece. And we'll tuck that one right there. All right, so again, now we've got our next layer of the actual pasta sheets. Now that I've got sauce in there, though, if I tilt it, Gonna slide everywhere. All right, next we're gonna add some ricotta cheese. All right, we're gonna actually add just about all of this ricotta cheese. Now, because this is a spreadable cheese, I'm gonna use a portion scoop and just dollop the different uh, batches of the ricotta cheese in different areas. And then just go ahead and almost kind of um, just push it down where once it spreads, once it's pushed down, it'll just connect to the other pieces. And when I do it in just a second, hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense. I feel like the way I just said it to you, it didn't make a lot of sense, but it will in just a second. All right, and you can be really precise about this pattern. Again, it's all what you start to practice with. All right, but we're gonna go ahead and use all of the ricotta cheese. So again, we're gonna use all two cups in this step. Totally empty. And then we're going to smash it down. Now I am just going to use a rubber spatula for this. And just as I kind of smash it down, I'm gonna to try to spread it a little bit. 
Now my ricotta had been in the refrigerator, obviously, and when you go to make the lasagna, it's not a horrible idea to let your ricotta sit out just a little bit so it's a little bit easier to spread. So because mine's a little bit stiff, I'm actually just gonna use my fingers and separate this and separate some of the pieces and then try to basically make a full sheet here. Now, ideally, I'm not gonna touch anything other than the ricotta. So we're not gonna have any, you know, red or orange sauce marks on my fingers or on the ricotta. You might get a little bit, but ideally with this layer, you wanna just have you know, one full layer. All right, and it doesn't have to be perfect because as it starts to melt, it'll ooze and spread and that is the goodness about the lasagnas. All right, so then next we are going to do one more layer of the noodle. All right, and this is gonna be our last layer of the noodle. So I'm gonna use my last few pieces over here. Oops. And this piece is actually a little bit too long for our pan. So I'm gonna spread that, or cut that, excuse me. And again, it's just a matter of sizing things. I'm just gonna tuck that piece because I didn't cut it and I had already laid it down. And then this guy is a little bit wider, so I'll put him here. And it doesn't have to be completely perfectly coated. If you've got a little bit of spaces, it is not the end of the world. You can see, you'll be able to see when I show you in just a second, you'll be able to see some of the ricotta and not a big deal. All right, I'm gonna use some of this. I had one piece of pasta sheet that was really skinny, so I'm just gonna kind of tuck in and basically use it almost like a Play-Doh and form in some of these skinny holes or gaps, if you will. This is preference, you don't have to do that. You can have the gaps, it's not a big deal. I just had the pasta sheets, so I might as well use them. All right, so then this is going to be, we have our layer of uh, pasta sheet. And then lastly, we're gonna do two cups of sauce, the remaining sauce that's in there, and then mozzarella cheese, and then we're gonna do the grated Parmesan over the top. So let's go ahead and use the rest of the sauce. All right, same as before, make your life easier and spread it out as you go. You know, drop it in different places. Um, this seems going. Now, you because I'm using fresh pasta, I have preheated my oven to 375 degrees. Whether or not you're using fresh or dry pasta, and whether or not that dry pasta is cooked you're gonna usually be right in a temperature range of 350 to 400 degrees in the oven. Now the biggest difference in recipes is going to be the cook time. So we are at 375 degrees, All right? We're nice and spread there, perfect. And when we get done with everything, we're only gonna bake in the oven for about 25 minutes. And that's because our dough is fresh and it is not gonna take nearly as long as if it was dried pasta. So I'm gonna use the remainder of the cheese. Remember I had only used half um, the first layer that we used the mozzarella. All right, and then we're gonna put the grated Parmesan over the top of that. Now we only have a half a cup here of the grated, but it's gonna go right over the top. So like I said before, I am gonna put a little bit of fresh parsley over the top of the entire lasagna. And then we are going to cover this before it goes into the oven. And you wanna cover it with foil. I've got foil off to the side and I'll show you in just a second. You wanna cover it where your foil is gonna be tight and it's not going to touch any of the cheese. So make sure that when you wrap this, that the foil itself doesn't dip down because it will get stuck to the cheese 
and you don't want that in the oven. Now, you do not have to cover this. A lot of recipes will say that you should, and the reason being is that as the cheese starts to cook, especially the Parmesan, the grated Parmesan, because the grated Parmesan isn't a soft cheese being on that top layer, you don't want it to burn or scorch. So we're gonna pop this in the oven, 25 minutes, and then we will be ready to show you what our final product looks like. All right, so the lasagna has just come out of the oven. Very, very hot uh, gla glass baking dish. So let's take a look and see what it looks like when we pull the foil off. So we've got our foil here. And remember we said that we wanted to keep it where it wasn't um, gonna touch any of the cheese. So let's see, we've got just one little piece of cheese that got stuck here. And again, that's why we wanted to make sure that that didn't happen, or that's what we were hoping for didn't happen. So here you go, you have your nice lasagna. Um, good suggestion is to let it rest for just a few minutes before you go try to slice it. it just kind of lets that cheese settle. Same idea as um, when you do that with a pizza. So we'll give this just about a minute or two and then we will slice it and plate. There it is guys and gals, final product time and time to plate. So we took our offset spatula. Actually, first I used a pizza cutter and cut all down our pan into 12 portions here. And then I took the piece from the middle, actually, to be our first piece. Sometimes with pies and lasagnas and baked dishes and casseroles, if you take that center piece, the other pieces kind of keep their shape a little bit more. So I did that, and you can see that it kind of oozed out a little bit, but then we have our plated piece of lasagna here, and it is ready to be eaten. So hopefully you guys get a chance to try something like this. And boom. please make sure that you let us know, show it to us, and we'll see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.